legitimate reason to pause. Now, you got like a Russell Wilson who's lightning fast, so he overcomes it. You got Drew Brees, who may be one of the smartest instinctive quarterbacks we've ever seen. So there's a chance, but it kind of pushes me off my traditional analysis of what to do. I'm, the, the concern with uh, Darnold is real. And at the same time, there's clear upside there. I mean, he's a strong thrower. He's a physical presence. He can make plays on his own. I'm not sure he's the best leader or is smart. Doesn't seem to be getting as much coverage as some of the other guys. You know, Josh Allen, I am a believer in analytics, although tape overrules it. And uh, 60% is the threshold under which there's a huge drop-off in success rates in the NFL, so that scares me. Yeah. And Jim Mora's comments aside, I'm not a huge Josh Rosen fan, well, even though I think he throws the ball really okay, well. Okay, let's so talk about that. I'm not as enthused about the group. Okay, you're not as enthused. Let's talk about Jim Mora's comments about Josh Rosen, and you said you're not a fan. If I'm a GM and he uses the word millennial... If you're a millennial, you love being called a millennial. If you're a 50-year-old GM, millennial may be code for attitude and, you know, pushes back on authority. What did you make of Morris' comments? Well, first of all, there's a big difference for me. If you're sitting there and, and let's say some GM who's thinking of picking calls you and you give him a very honest, deep analysis, that's one thing. To go out in this situation and really bash the kid and his character, not like how he throws the football his accuracy, I mean, I just think it was an unnecessary shot, but you're right. I mean, if I'm picking a quarterback, especially high in the draft, the last thing I want to hear is questioning his commitment to the game, questioning how bad he wants to win, how long he's going to be around. And that's aside from the obvious health concerns that anybody looks at the situation is going to have. So I wasn't a big Josh fan on my own for other reasons. I really thought Jim's comments were unnecessary and appropriate in a private context to somebody who's researching it. But really, a, a shot at the kid publicly that I just don't feel good about myself. By the way, um, you know, you, Odell Beckham, you know that Northeast Corridor, Philly, Washington, New York, Boston. The media is loud. The fans are passionate. They love Odell Beckham. He's going to be expensive, and he is a perimeter player who, Joe, is fragile. We have a history here. Some have said, listen, he is so popular and he's in his prime, you can't trade guys like that. As a general manager, is it all data with Odell to you? Fragile, you know, because his big games, they haven't won any more than his average games. If you were a GM with Odell, how, what things do you care about if you did consider him keeping him or letting him go? Well, I care about the character stuff. I mean, he cannot disrupt the locker room. I mean, I think Ben McAdoo lost the team over his inability at times to be stern enough that players knew he meant what he said. I don't think that was just on Odell, but I think he contributed to it. So for me, he's got so much talent that the level at which he has to start to become questionable character-wise is quite high before you start to think about moving him. And you don't see many players of that caliber moved. I mean, I really think he's amongst the very best in the league, and he's young, uh, and he can change games. But... If you get to the point where you're disrupting the whole rest of the team and uh, attitudes become, you know, okay that shouldn't be okay. You know, the second year Jeff Lurie and I were running the Eagles, we went out to San Francisco to play a game. We sat for a full 24 hours with Carmen Policy and John McVay and all the guys who were running the, the uh, 49ers through that decade when they won all those Super Bowls to pick their brain. And they said something that stuck with me forever. Don't add any questionable character guys until you have the most solid culture with phenomenal leaders in your locker room, and then never add more than two or three. And if you look at the way the Giants roster has been constructed the last few years and where they sit today, you know, they break that rule. And I think that rule is great. I watched it at the Eagles. I watched other teams do that. And I consistently saw if you didn't really have a solid culture, and even sometimes when you did with great leadership and you brought on that kind of personality, it can be really challenging. So they have to either really upgrade the roster Pat Sherman has to take really, really strong control and get some dynamic leaders in there. Or I think Odell's going to continue to be a problem that can hurt the team. Joe Banner, former Eagle Brown exec. Of course, he drafted to Donovan McNabb, and for years they dominated the NFC where they were in multiple NFC championships with one of my favorite guys, Andy Reid. Okay, I sat with an NFL GM two nights ago, had dinner with him, and he said, Colin, this is about as good a running back draft as we've had in years. He said, I think there's eight or nine kids who can play in this league. Joe, for that reason, I can't take Saquon Barkley that high. I just think you can get 90% of them elsewhere. 
Would you, I mean, I the story out today that Cleveland could want him number one. What do you make of a nice running back? Would you be less willing to take Barkley because there's depth at the position? First of all, don't believe the stories about him being picked number one by the Browns. I just don't think there's any chance whatsoever. I know some of the people that are there. I know John Dorsey a bit. You know, I've, I've watched what the teams have been able to do the last few years, even with the the running backs were taken in the first round. There were running backs taken in the second and third round. And look what happened with Hunt and Kamara last year. Yeah. And, you know, nobody's questioning how good Fournette is, but would you rather have a great player at four and Hunt instead of Fournette and, you know, who knows who they get in the third round? So I don't think there's any chance of that happening. And I would definitely never, never pick a running back that high. And it's, it's always that reason. I'm not a devaluer of the running back position. I mean, in Philadelphia, we went from Deuce, Ricky Waters, actually, to Deuce Staley, to Brian Westbrook, to Shady McCoy. So I don't think running back isn't important to me. But we got those guys in the second and the third round. Yeah. And you don't need to do any more than that. Yeah. The key is getting a running back helps you in the passing game as well as the running game, keeps the defense honest. You could use them to get first downs on third and five, like we see the Patriots do with all the way back to Kevin Falk and now up to Deion Lewis. That's what you need to get there. So I think. There's no question he's going to be a phenomenal player, but I would not reach up there and get him. Minute left, Joe. You put the dream team together in Philadelphia, and it was it didn't quite work. Rams are doing the same. I mean, good, good God, they've got talent. I'm listening to you. I don't think you're going to like what the Rams are doing, right? You are. You, you are right. You know, listen, it's a little bit unique because they have so much cap room next year. But, I mean, they're set up to lose probably Tlaib, Sue, and possibly Cook at the end of the season with a 23-, 24-year-old quarterback and a young head coach and a number of really, really good young players. So, uh, you know, for me, the, the locker room question is big. Uh, don't forget, they lost Watkins, they lost Ogletree, they lost Quinn, they lost Johnson. So how much better are the four guys they added than those four? I do think they're a little better, and I do think they're a little better fit for the scheme. But we're acting like they added four players and nothing else happened. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned with the, the character stuff in the locker room and, and that much change. I'm concerned about the short term that those guys are going to be there. And, you know, even though they have a lot of room next year, they have a lot of players. They're going to be 15, 20, 25 million yep. dollar players coming up in the next few years that they should be keeping all of them. Joe Banner, absolute pleasure. Loved it. Thank you, sir. Now, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You bet. Joe Banner, former Eagle and Brown executive. Coming up next, the latest on Kyrie Irving, Chris Broussard, too, our mocked NFL draft. It's the herd.